Hello and welcome. My name is Natalie Ariola, and in today's episode, I'll be making some images based upon the work of Imogen Cunningham. Cunningham is truly one of the mothers of photography. She began shooting in 1901 and continued until her death in 1976 at the age of 93. Cunningham is an intriguing character who was full of grit and far ahead of her time both politically and artistically. She was an artist to the core, and yet also a very down-to-earth personality who saw no benefit to putting on airs, nor to being anything short of completely frank about her thoughts, ideas, and opinions. As a female photographer in the early days of the medium, her path was not an easy one, and it took years for her to gain the notoriety she deserved. But she was not the type to allow the ignorance of those around her to discourage or shut her down. In this regard, I feel a great personal affinity for Cunningham and her unwavering enthusiasm and dedication to her craft. Cunningham said of photography, I don't think there is a formula for a fine photograph, for every person has a different idea about one. In this regard, she was vastly different from her male peers who seemed always to be offering definitions and guidelines for what does and does not constitute art and art photography. This freedom of form and thought can be recognized in her work, which often takes on something of a poetic form. In fact, she described the photographic process in this way. In order to make a good photograph, you have to be enthusiastic. That is, you have to think about it like a poet would. But what does it mean to think about your photographs like a poet would? Let's find out in today's episode of Natalie Ariola is Murdering the Classics. Cunningham is probably best known for her photographs of plants, but these images are mostly from her earlier work, and she was a bit needled by the fact that people obsessed over these few images rather than taking interest in many of her favorite images from her vast and varied body of work. In fact, she was very much a portrait artist, and though she gave up the plant life photography, she practiced portraiture until her dying day. Personally, I find her portrait work to be far more interesting and experimental than the plant studies she is so well known for. And that is why I will be creating portraits in today's shoot. Her portraits are minimalist, tender, and emotive, with beautiful glowing light and often focusing on the body as much as the face. She had a thing for hands and frequently photographed people using their hands, particularly if they were someone who worked with their hands. In these images, the subject's face is often completely absent from the picture, the hands becoming the focal point and defining characteristic. In my images, I will take this fascination with the subject's hands as a cue, while also attempting to build portraits which are deeply expressive and poetic. I will honor her naturalistic style of portraiture and use the body and the hands to communicate thought and feeling and to convey a poetic sense of fascination with the honest, the everyday, and the ordinary. For today's shoot, I'm going to use a combination of studio lights and natural light to create images with a soft and subtle power. We are joined today by my lovely friend Cheyenne, who will serve as our model for the shoot. Cheyenne has beautiful blonde hair that I'd like to use along with posing of both the body and hands to build a quiet intensity in my portraits. My intent is not to create images which feel posed, but rather images which take on a sense of soft poetic energy created by an attention to gesture and minute details. My attempt at the poetic will be focused on a sense of appreciation for the natural and the ordinary. Just as Cunningham was unforgivingly honest in her approach to her work, I will attempt to present my subject with honesty and respect for the natural state. Okay, so we are set up and ready to shoot. 
And just to give you an idea of what we are going to be doing here, I have Cheyenne sitting here on a couch. I've got her positioned in front of a couple of windows, and there's one window that's actually directly behind her, so that's going to be providing a bit of a rim light on this side. It's basically just going to give us a nice highlight there in her hair and along her shoulder and neck. And then I also have my Godox 60 watt light that I'm going to be using. I am using it at a fairly low setting because I just kind of want this to be a subtle addition of some light here. And I'm using what they call Cena foil. So this is basically just black foil to kind of narrow the beam of light and uh, give it a little direction to give it that appearance of an actual window light like in the mid afternoon or something like that. So we're gonna go ahead and take a few shots and see how this looks. Let me just tell you what my settings are. So I have my f-stop set to four, I have an ISO of 800 and I'm at one one sixtieth of a second. So I chose an f-stop of four because I want a nice shallow depth of field on this. I think it'll work for that sort of soft vibe that we're going for and it's just nice for portraiture in general. So let's go ahead and take a few shots here. Now will you look back towards me with your head and tilt your chin down just a little bit. Perfect. So I'm just trying to get that kind of natural poetic sense that Imogen Cunningham talks about and that's uh, also why we decided to pull Cheyenne's hair up into this kind of soft bun and just have some tendrils of hair hanging down because it just seems like a very natural look, something that you would see uh, someone wearing at any time of day. Will you turn your torso a little bit more towards me and then um, actually scooch a little bit forward on the couch? Perfect, okay. And um, bring your head back this direction. I think we're still good on the light. So let's get a couple like this, that's very nice. And now, why don't we have you bring your hand up to your neck here, there we go. And maybe we can even do like something kind of like this, like just like touching the side of your face. There we go, that's nice. Pull it back a little bit further. There you go, perfect, that's great. Okay, so we have switched our setup and we now have Cheyenne here lying on the couch. I have decided to put a softbox on my light for this shot. So this is the same light that I was using before, but I now have a 36 inch Octabox on it. And this will just add to the window light in the room to create a very nice, soft, even lighting for this image. So I'm just going to get up on this Apple box so I can get a little bit above her for this shot. And my settings are actually going to be the same as they were in the previous shot. So I have one one sixtieth of a second shutter speed, ISO of 800 and an f-stop of four. So we're just going to get a nice shallow depth of field on this again. And I'm actually maybe going to tossle Cheyenne's hair a little bit here. And I'm just going to kind of shoot down on her. So that is great right there. Let's take a shot. Perfect. And I'm just going to, like before, probably get some different angles. So maybe we'll do one down a little bit lower. Okay, and I also have some flowers here that I thought it would be nice to kind of just put some of these in her hair. It just gives like a little bit of contrast and just something extra kind of interesting element to the image. Yeah, I like that. That's perfect, beautiful.
pretty much it. Just a very simple setup and we can call it a wrap. We definitely had a great shoot today and I think we got some absolutely beautiful images of Cheyenne. How did you feel about the shoot? I really enjoyed myself. I felt very comfortable and um, it was just a very peaceful and like soft and gentle experience. That's great. Perfect. Before we take a look at our final images, I wanted to make note of another remark from Cunningham specifically on portraiture. People cannot accept themselves as they really are. And that's the problem of the portrait photographer. What did Cunningham mean when she said this? At one point, shortly after she made some famous images of dancer Martha Gray, Cunningham was contacted by Vanity Fair and asked to work on assignment for them. They asked her who she'd like to photograph, and her response was, and I quote, ugly men, because you know, they never complain. It seemed that Cunningham felt there was a disconnect between the way she made portraits and what the individual being photographed wanted to see. She saw herself as the poet representing the truth and beauty of the everyday, but her subjects wanted to view themselves in a more romanticized light. This for her was part of the portrait photographer's plight, how to photograph one's subject with honesty when the subject herself may not like what she sees. Let's take a look at our final images and see if we can't draw some conclusions in regard to the photographer as poet. I've chosen three images from our shoot to represent my take on Imogen Cunningham's poetic approach to portraiture. The first image is simple and classic. It captures Cheyenne in an easy posture that does not feel posed. Her expression is a bit dreamy and her neck and back create a strong yet soft line. I find the delicacy and subtlety of gesture here to be in keeping with a sense of poetry in the simplicity of the everyday. The other two images, though from the same setup, are actually quite a bit different from one another. The first feels very natural and captures something that I can only describe as the beauty of a moment remembered. The second image is a bit more stylized. I've added the flowers to her hair, and the composition feels more deliberate. Both images have a poetic quality, but one is a poetry of the ordinary, while the other feels more symbolic and borderlining on surreal. And what of Cunningham's comment in regard to the problem of the portrait photographer? Looking at these images, we cannot uncover an answer to her problem. Whether you, the viewer, appreciate these images or not, does not say anything about how the subject views herself or these pictures. What I can contribute here is personal experience. Yes, I have created images that I felt were very beautiful and poetic, but that my subject seemed to dislike. Is this because they cannot accept themselves as they really are, as Cunningham said? I think this is a complex question, and even an existential one. Can any of us honestly say that we fully accept ourselves as we really are? I'll leave it up to you to decide. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss out on future episodes as I continue in my quest to murder the classics.